little baby you, you got what I need. <laughs> but you say, I'm just a friend. And you say, I'm just a friend. But you see, when I set out, I intend to break, then bend, mold, and mend all these trends that make us see gender before we see friends. Now let me unpack one of these nuggets that the University of California, Los Angeles is willing to lend. When asked in a YouTube survey, 8 out of 10 dudes, that's people with one Y to their X, and if we need to define sex, men think we can't be just friends. Yes, despite our best intentions, there are some friendships just not worth the mention. And I could jump into a biological reason and talk about hormones, or maybe there's a chemical misunderstood undertone. Or a physiological explanation, something like that, but there's nothing logical about it. It is straight up whack, so I want to take it back to the beginning. And I'm not talking about Adam and Eve. I'm talking about this poem I read, Baby, You Got What I Need. And you say I'm just a friend. And I'm no guru, and I don't mean to offend. I just want to express myself before these 15 minutes end. In my books, we wouldn't set each other apart because we were born with or without a certain part. And in my books, gender wouldn't exist, but it does, so I pause. This is me trying to figure out my fundamental flaws. Maybe I don't think men and women can be just friends. I'm a bro, yo, and not the one living in the world of Barbie and Ken. I have a lot of sisters, roughly three and a half billion. And just as many brothers, don't let me forget that. But either way, Sagar, let's get back on track. Men and women can't be just friends because whew, no matter how hard I try, I can't resist to have women remind me of the hardest, longest inequality that still exists. And men and women can't be just friends because well, that very thought will remind me how women are perfectly built to be role models. And I do have one weakness, though. An older woman. I'll do anything to please her. Profound insight, no comma splice, she was my favorite teacher. Now I know that I take this a bit far, but believe me, I'm not trying to pretend that this, this is what I think when you ask if we're just friends. So that is a piece of Sagar Jha called Spoken Word Poetry, or the slam poet inside of me. Um, I'm actually not going to be talking about gender issues, because I really want to talk about inspiration. And connections certainly can inspire. And all I can think about right now is all of the connections that I've made in every single second of my life when George and Ute were playing that song. And when I say the word inspiration, one thing comes to my mind. And one thing comes to a lot of people's minds. Inspiration is as follows. Whoa, great idea. And then a wave of creativity surges over you. You pick up a pen and a paper and you write it down. Or you grab a brush and a canvas. You paint a masterpiece. Or you go over to the computer and you switch degrees. You drop out of school and you join the Peace Corps. Okay? And I've had that feeling a lot in my life. And I'm sure a lot of people have had that feeling a lot in their life too. But I'm sure a lot of people have had this feeling too. Inspiration. Bam, great idea. Wave of creativity surges over you. You pick up the pen and the paper, but it seems to be out of ink. And you go to the canvas and you can't quite get that picture out of you and you go to the computer and you think about joining the Peace Corps and in that feeling of not doing it we get failure and this idea of missing out which come together to make a baby that I like to call guilt and self-doubt but I actually think that that's a little bit flawed that's not really how inspiration works for me at least and I don't think that's how it should work for everyone I think that those two feelings are part of the same equation called inspiration. And I want to explain that to you with a bit of an analogy. Uh, and the analogy is this. Every time I have an idea, it's like a whale dies in the ocean. I look directly at Hal when I say this. <laughs> um, but uh, connection, whoa, look at that. Um, <laughs> But any time I have an idea, it's like a whale dies in the ocean. I see this beautiful, magnificent creature that we all marvel at. There's something so special about that. And I want to reach out and I want to grab that whale, but I miss out on it. And it falls to the bottom of the ocean to be lost forever. But not really. Because 17 minutes within, that, with, because within 17 minutes of that whale hitting the ocean floor, hagfish arrive. And they start not decomposing and degrading the whale or the idea, but changing it and making it something new. And not only do they start changing it, making something new, crabs show up and sleeper sharks arrive and there's this whole thriving community of not organisms decomposing this idea or this whale, but organisms adding to it and taking away from it and creating this 
great collection of ideas all within one person. And I could reach out at any moment and grab that community and throw it on a piece of paper or put it into a conversation that matters. Or I could let it be passively. And eventually that whale or that idea you think is gone completely, but at the end of the day there are bones there. And those bones to me are the fundamentals of that, of that initial idea, the foundation, the backbone, and the rest of the bones. Um, but <laughs> what is the core value of that idea? How is that idea going to change how I see myself and who I am fundamentally? And I could grab that and throw it onto a piece of paper or into a painting, or that piece could just become a part of me, or both, without me even knowing it or expressing it in a way where I see it, but I feel it, and everyone else around me feels it. But it's not that simple. It's not linear, you know, idea, collection of ideas, core value, or whale, community, bones. There's more to it, because it doesn't end there. After that community dissipates and goes off into the ocean, all of these different ideas that have taken parts of other ideas and really changed what they are fundamentally, they go off into the ocean and do something crazy. I don't know what they do. Some of them might join a school of fish. Others might go off and get eaten by another fish and become something bigger than themselves and the idea entirely. So it's always happening. It's always changing. Your inspiration. Your ideas are always, they're dynamic and they're fluid. And essentially what I'm really trying to say is that in these moments of inspiration, you have this great idea come over you and you don't, quote-unquote, capture it, well, I think that we need to redefine that inactivity as proaction. And trust yourself on this one, okay? Because you are being proactive. You're letting that idea settle and sink into you. And you, unfortunately, maybe some of us can roll our eyes into the backs of our heads, but regardless, there's no light there. Just like there's no light in the bottom of the ocean. You can't actually see it changing and growing inside of you, but you can feel it, and you will express it. Please, please believe me on this one, because you know what? You're a genius, and you're a genius, and all of you are geniuses, and the most complex ecosystem that I can think of is the ocean that is your brain. And if I've lost you on this long-winded uh, analogy, I'm going to try to lose you even further right now, okay? Because <laughs> I just want to close my talk with a piece of poetry that... Um, takes this analogy and, and applies it to something different, or, or rather, redefines this analogy. <clears throat> Sometimes people ask me why I did it. The poetry, that is, and I have to admit it, it was never to spit it through this wireless microphone into all your earlobes while I stand on this throne, because the fact of the matter is, on this stage right here, well, <sighs> well, yeah, I'm alone. And with what? This poem or a shot at getting known? No, 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 no. These are seeds that I've grown. Grown for years without me ever knowing. <clears throat> because in my life, nuggets and questions and conflicts and clarity and tensions and arguments and debates all turn themselves into a seed about this small. And then it'll fall into a place that it seems to perfectly fit. And some root down deep and some right at the surface, but trust me, either way, grow in them. It's worth it. And some might fall into an old garden and some might become part of a new project you're starting, but either way, someday they'll get to a point where you harvest. And when you do harvest, Please don't pull the entire plant out. In fact, you'll find you can't because it's connected to every other idea like bear, river, and trout. And in that sense, it makes no sense to me to get tense over whence our ideas become so immense that we can harvest. And no, I don't know if these ideas ever stop growing, but trust me, at any single moment, they are worth showing the world. But when you go to show them, don't let someone's reaction trot over it like a pair of boots. And again, please don't pick out those roots. Just take what you need, a leaf, a branch, a stem, a fruit, and synthesize that into something more so that you can tap into those ideas you had no idea you stored. And if you do it once, trust me, it'll happen an infinite times more. 
Because you, my friend, you are an artist. And I'm not talking about the kind of artist that crafts a masterpiece in watercolors or the one that recites a monologue to change the perspective of others or even the ones who jot in their notebook with all these words that they took. I'm talking about the real artist, a gardener, a fire stoker. Because sometimes we have a spark that ignites us and excites us, excites us and invites us on a journey of great resistance. And you know what? We might not feel the heat for a second or a minute or an hour or a day or even weeks. And we might not feel it at all. <laughs> but sometimes we are gifted and cursed and we get the chance to observe a spark go within or a seed get planted and we think when we don't capture it that we've lost it. We lost that piece of, pa piece of artwork, that wonderful piece of poetry. But you've got to remember that fires spark new fires and seeds become trees. So please remember next time you think you missed your shot that you didn't. And it was meant to be. Because what this world needs is a couple people who are a little more patient with their own creativity. Thank you.